we are clouded with taken up by ourselves or with ourselves. Hallelujah, somebody. All sort of stuff the enemy brought in to us. Glory to God. So now we have modern facilities, as they would say. We have modern technology, all of these things. And sometimes you do wonder, have we been to a place with Jesus where we can say we are much better off than we were before? Now it is important then for us to understand that we are living in a world that if fear is going to grip you, then you got to, as it were, get strength from God. So that's why he prayed, Paul prayed, that we might be strengthened with might in our inner man. That you got to understand you have to face the things that are happening around you now. And you got to realize that governments not going to be so much for us who are Christians. Praise ye the Lord somebody. And you also have to realize that they're going to pass laws. And they're going to enact them. And they are going to maintain those laws to bring us under their control. Praise the Lord somebody. But the church of God cannot be controlled by men. Christ is the head of the church. Praise ye the Lord. Christ. Glory to God somebody. He is what? The director of the church. He is the CEO of the church. And so you got to understand even if men decide what they want to do, then you got to understand the church of the living God will have to stand up for what God said. Give the Lord a praise somebody. Oh hallelujah somebody. So you got to understand what the devil is after. The devil is after our young people. If he can get the old one, he will get them, but he's after the younger ones. Because he wants them to come up into a world where what we call morality today does not exist no more. Are you understanding that? And so he wants to get them and that's why he's doing all that he can. And if you are in church, you got to know that's what he's trying to do. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. So a lot of young people are not aware because they come up into a world where people are telling them whatever your choice is, it's your choice. Whatever you feel like doing, it's what? And they will tell you, right in your own house, they will tell you, it's my choice, it's my decision, let me make my own mistakes. So you got to understand what is really what? Happening around you. And so, when you pray for the ability to perceive certain things, well, you can avert certain crises before it even what? Comes to you. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. So, the Bible speaks of, we have to what? Imitate God in this world. And so, when you understand what God requires of us, somebody got to stand up and speak, just like Sister Nibs was saying. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. They will try to shut you down. They will call you names. And when they can't get anything done, they will try to discredit you. But you still got to stand up and say what Jesus said. So, I was talking to a lady yesterday, and she was talking to me, about certain things and she said that's why you got to turn a blind eye and so on and so forth and I said to her you're a Christian if you see wrongs going down you can't turn no blind eye to it you got to what say what you need to say and whatever happened happens thereafter praise ye the Lord because you got to understand that when you see wrong and you decide not to say anything and you are right there then God hold you responsible for it too the world that we're living in that's what they want to do they want to do their thing and we must not say anything. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. I have a mouth and I have the word of God. And you got to understand that God called us to what? To show forth his praise. To show forth his glory. And the biggest thing that you see now is a lack of morality even among churches too. That's what you see now. So. Paul, talking to Titus, sent him down to Crete. The people of Crete were liars. And he called them slow belly liars. They were contentious. Praise the Lord, somebody. And he sent him down there. And you got to understand, as Paul said, it's the same thing happening around today. People are not enduring sound doctrine anymore. Praise the Lord. They have all kind of fables. And they have all kind of stuff they invent. And they do all sorts of stuff, but you got to understand, you got to enjoy sound doctrine. Hallelujah, somebody. So when you see now the things that are happening, 
And Paul talks about even homosexual behavior in Romans chapter 1. God is already saying from then until now, it would have become a worldwide phenomenon. And it is here with us right now. Praise be the Lord. It used to be among citizens and members of government would never dare open their mouth to say I am a homosexual. But now you elect them to what? The Senate, like in the United States or in Britain or wherever. And when they are through, they are standing up now and telling you I am a what? A gay person. See, no more what? Shame. You understand what I'm saying? Then you got to understand the vile nature that Satan is what? Imparting to people now. They have no more shame. Get it? And they are walking in the streets. And when Ireland get the referendum, you see men in the street kissing men. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Then you got to understand when our little children see that, who can't think for themselves, they're going to think it is okay. And that's exactly what the devil wants them to think. So if you don't have a conversation at home and you don't talk to your children about this kind of stuff, get it? Then you find that even some of them already, already what? Hooked on to what? Same sex people and will tell you now this is my boyfriend and this is my girlfriend. And it's happening right here too. And these kids in school, they know it's happening there too. See? And you got to understand, you as a young Christian, you as a young Christian, and the rest of you as young Christians, you got to stand up and understand and say to them, it's an abomination to God. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. You can't be silent about stuff like that because you got to see what God is trying to what? Tell you, it is what? Abomination to Him. If it is abomination to God, it must be to you too. It is telling you how God feels about it. Praise the Lord, somebody. So the governments, and we see if the trend has been set in Ireland, the first country in the entire world, I call Ireland St. Patrick's country. When you, if you were going to school and, and you used to read some of those reading books with St. Patrick, the whole scene was in Ireland. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. So you find a God-fearing people when the first time before Azusa Street Revival, and you have the, the, the evangelist, his last name was Evans, and there was a revival in all of Ireland. People turned to God. People turned away from sin. Stop drinking liquor. Hallelujah, somebody. The Holy Ghost fell on them in meetings. There were people who went there to see what the revival was about. They left with the fire in them. They went to United States also, and things begin to happen there. Praise ye the Lord. So you got to understand then that they had a revival sometime in 18 something going among them. And today they have what? Transgressed the word of God and met as a country. 62% of them voted for gay rights. So the priests and the bishops, they are also of the same persuasion. Are you understand what I'm saying? So if you have them in a pulpit preaching, our children are destined to do what? The same thing too. They don't have a chance even to survive no more because the priest is doing it. And the priest is standing up and telling you that this is what he is. So your prayer has to change. And the way you focus your prayer has to be redirected. So if they have a referendum, so, so to speak, the country has gone that way now. People were cheering. People were cheering. See? And the bad thing about it, like Sister Nib said now, is that church people join them too. The United Methodist Church, and even if we're on the internet, I can call it because all over in the news anyway. They are planning to have what you call an inclusion. To include gay members 
in their churches now. As the expression would go, John Wesley will turn in his grave. So if they are going that way, and the Anglican church was already considering it, and they were so, as it were, so perturbed, the ones in Africa, that many of them were planning to leave. Some were even deciding they're going to join the Muslim religion as a result of that. So the Archbishop of Canterbury is still having it under consideration. Not rejecting it, but having it under consideration. Pope Francis came, he made it even worse. He opened the Catholic Church now to bring them in. You and I must understand that's not the Christianity that God intended. Never will be. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Doesn't matter how many persons go in, how many persons go out, then you got to understand that what you must stand for is the living word of God, the true word of God. It doesn't matter what they say, doesn't matter what they think, you must stand up for the word of God. They will say to you, that was then, this is now. We're in modern time. God said, seek the whole path and walk therein. That's what he I'm an old time Christian. Praise the Lord somebody. When you look in verse 1 of Titus. He said but speak thou these things. Hello. Speak thou what? This thing. Which become at what? Sound doctrine. So even our children in school. We have to teach them what they must stand up for. And what they must not fall for. Praise ye the Lord somebody. And you got to tell them. And you got to what? Teach it to them. Because they are going into a culture. That sooner or later they are embracing it. This country is currently under what? The European Union. And you got to understand. When they pass their laws for these kind of stuff. It will be enforced right in this place too. So you got to understand the B system. Are you getting it? Then you got to see that when they what, get what they want and they turn against God and they in our claws, you got to see what is happening here. Then they are going to tell you this is really of God. When Antichrist comes, he's going to pretend and his government to be like the government of God. Praise be the Lord. So the Bible tells you a beast came up out of the earth. Revelation chapter 13, 11. He has two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. Praise be the Almighty God. A twofold government pretending to be the lamb. So that's why he tells you, Jesus tells you, by their fruit you will what? Know them. He looks like a lamb, but when he spake, he spake as a dragon. If you want to put it another way, pretending to be a Christian, but the underlying truth inside is what? Burst in the seams, coming out for you to see. So the Bible tells you then, you must send you a what? Sound doctrine. Hello, somebody? Yeah, it's sound doctrine. Now, he tells us this. And what I'm talking about here, he said in verse 7, in all things you must show yourself a pattern of what? Good works. In doctrine or teachings, showing what? Uncorruptness. Gravity and sincerity. That means whatever you believe, you must be serious about what you believe. And you must stand up for what you believe. And don't flip at all. Glory to God. I think I told you already about some kid when we were growing up. Very good friend of us. Me and my young sister were about the same age. We all went up to the same church, learned the same Bible verses and all of that. It was um, what they call summer Bible school. All of this kind of thing. Praise the Lord somebody. Go to Sunday school, all of this kind of stuff. Boy grew up and he got married. So one day my sister saw him, probably in Jamaica somewhere. And then he asked me, gave him 
my number. He called me right here in BPI. I know he had a, he married and he had a daughter. By the time I asked him, you know, what happened? Um, how's your wife and your daughter? And he took a long time before he answered, and I realized that something was wrong. And by the time he get through telling me, he's a homosexual now. See, how did he get there? He explained to me that when they transferred him to Cayman Islands, and he was working there, he met them in the banks, the echelons of the bank. Praise the Lord, somebody. Rich folks. See? And they offer him this and they offer him that. Hallelujah, somebody. They offer him apartment. They offer him all kind of stuff. And he said, now I have a what? I'm a U.S. citizen. I have my passport, everything. And I have wonderful apartment, all of that and so on. And the, the only thing I could say, but you know what the Bible say? What you're doing is wrong. See? Only just go silent. Didn't have much else to say. He wanted to change the subject, but I stuck with it. You understanding that? Because the enemy uses money to also what? Influence our children. And then you got to understand that some folks who love money, they will do anything. Some of them will come right inside here. You, are you understand what I'm saying? Whatever they're going to be searching for, they'll certainly get what they came for. Or what they didn't come for, they will get. Praise ye the Lord. We're not talking about condemning them, but we're going to preach a living gospel. Hallelujah, somebody. And if, if, if whatever happened, they, they can always go through the door and what? Carry hate or whatever, but we got to stand on the word of God and stand on the word of truth. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. So men got to understand that you cannot make it into the kingdom. Paul tells you in, in Corinthians, and he tells us that the effeminate person will not enter into the kingdom of God. That's the homosexual. And those who love money and those who are extortioners, all of these folks, he said, cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Praise ye the Lord. Except they change or except they repent, they will all likewise perish. Because that's what God requires a man to do. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. So Paul charged the, the, the older men in the church. In verse 2. And he charged them to be sober. Hello somebody. In other words then. You must be serious about your business. And you don't go on like you. You, you want to be drunk inside here. You must be sober. The opposite of being sober is being drunk. In other words. If you are drunk it means you are sleeping in the spirit so to speak. But you must be sober. Mean you must be alert of what is really happening. He tells you you must be great. You must be serious. And be sincere about what? Your call. Whatever God has in your life. But you must be serious about your walk with God. And that's why you can't flip flop in a time like this. Paul said you must walk circumspectly. You must redeem the times. Because the days are evil. And the more I...